Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Um, super late tonight. I got some technical difficulties setting everything up. I'm actually lugging all my um, streaming setup uh, to the WeWork, and um, it's getting heavier and heavier, and there's more bits to it. Uh, so it takes time to uh, put it back together again. I haven't done that in a while. So, anyway, we're up. Hopefully, the levels are okay. Struggling with that still, trying to get the voice, um, the music, and everything going. We've got some new stuff. Uh, I've got one more uh, camera now. I kind of set up, it's kind of blatantly ripped off Huffman's um, layout. But that's okay, because he probably won't watch this, so he'll never know. Um, but um, yeah, just reworked the chat too, so hopefully I'll uh, um, see it better and everyone will see it better. And also, um, I um, tweaked the way the analog pocket um, is being um, rendered now. So I have two views. Um, the one I'm going to leave on most of the time, which is this tiny little guy. And then one day, when we have stuff on screen that's worth checking out, we'll have this one. Um, of course, right now that's not the case. We don't have really anything to look at. Um, not much. We're looking at the basic asset um, sample from, um, from Analog, and we're trying to understand how the bridge commands um, work. So made some progress uh, last time. I uh, was doing a silent uh, devco, um, so I couldn't really I couldn't talk during the the stream. But um, I was trying to point out things that I was uh, figuring out, and um, well, we did figure out um, quite a few things. We figured out. Um, let's see. Oh, something else that's, that's kind of cool. There's um, um, my um, uh, Quartus. A dev machine is now a Linux box, which means I can actually um, really easily copy updated files um, using rsync from my uh, macOS box to uh, the Linux box, which is kind of cool. Also, um, I can um, execute commands on the Linux box, the Linux box, which means I now have targets in um, Nova to um, uh, build remotely but also program remotely. So what's cool is it, it will build all this project on the Linux box, and then it will trigger the program uh, programming of the FPGA, which is going to uh, save us having to put stuff on the SD card, uh, eject the card. Um, when we're working on the core now, we can just use either this directly on the Linux box right here. Um, I will show you guys what it does. I do program device, and it basically resets um, 
the core um, without you having to touch the SD card. It basically just sends the bitstream back to the core much faster. Um, so I can obviously do it from Quartus here, but um, with the setup that I have now, um, down the road when I'm not spending so much time looking at um, um, signal taps, um, I can actually do it from here too. Um, so I do it from my macOS project, um, play task, and the play task, what it actually ends up doing is um, telling the um, Linux box to program the FPGA directly. So, kind of cool. Anyway, where were we? Um, let's do a, um, well, let's see if we can um, do a signal tap to refresh our memory. Um, because this is not correct at all. <laughs> oh, I'm back to like auto signal tap and not my own. So we have to rebuild the signal tap file, unfortunately. Let's see if that's the case or not. Because our quartus ends up very often um, I'm not going to save anything here. And I'm just going to see if I grab the right file. Basic says build core template. It should be the right one. For some reason, it's not loading. Quite loading the right thing. Okay, no. okay. That's my host command. And it's going to trigger on a bridge right with the bridge address. Um, F8020. So let's um, let's trigger this. See if that works, and, um, and then we'll go from there. Are we running? We are running. Keep an eye on the chat just in case. Um, oh, we want to. So let's see. This is where the large bucket is going to come in useful. Um, we want to change some settings here. A pause on everything. Uh, don't need that display. The cool thing with this setup too is that when I have it like this, I'm catching uh, basically frame grabbing the pocket, which means this pocket screen is actually off right now. Uh, it only goes on, on when, it, when you switch dock display on but in this case for dev it's great because i can just look at my little monitor um for the stream just see this um tiny pocket and that saves my uh, analog pocket screen which is quite nice okay so that should be enough we are going to um see if we can just resume and just um and just boot it again, see what happens. Yep, that works. The screen is actually quite small, but I'm assuming it's it's paused. If I remember correctly, it's A O B. Perfect. All right. So the reason why we want to pause is because this is getting triggered on a um, access to um, to the address during the bridge uh, data load. And so we want to um, get the acquisition started uh, while the core is paused. So go back to this, anyone? Ready to acquire, we do acquire. So this acquisition in progress doesn't trigger on anything, which is great. And now we did. Okay. So I haven't dived into this code in a while. So it should be interesting. Why am I typing on the keyboard of the MacBook when I've got this perfectly fine keyboard here now? I ask you. I don't know. Okay. So this is a... Um, So bridge right, um, the address is correct, so it's triggering. What is a bridge right? Uh, a bridge right is when the um, when the um, pocket 
is trying to write something to uh, the core. So it's telling the core, hey, I want to write something at um, address 20. And all the F8 addresses are basically um, the uh, bridge addresses. So they're all basically something to do with the uh, with, uh, commands. Um, and so what is it writing? It's writing zero. Perfectly fine. <laughs> so that's the first thing that happens. Uh, what's address 20? Uh, 20, I hear you say. That's a very good question. This is where we go back to our analog documentation. So, memory map. What is 20 in here? Okay, I have a 1000. Oh, it's the data slot stuff, I think. Maybe not. Yes, yeah, so let's look at the code. Um, Bridge write. Here we are. If the address is um, anything here, if it's 20, it goes to host 20. I really hate those um, denominations, by the way. Um, once I understand this stuff, I'm going to rewrite um, this module uh, for my own stuff. And um, if anything, I'm not that I could write it better. Uh, maybe one day I will, but. Um, for the time being, if anything, to get rid of host and target. Um, host is the pocket and target is the core. And I think that it would be way better. Or at least it'll make more sense to me to call this um, pocket and core. So I remember, if I remember correctly, it says so somewhere, yeah, the host, the pocket. So we're going to have fun and do this now. But. Um, I'm still typing on the MacBook keyboard. <laughs> okay, so um, we go find host, not hot, host, and the host is the bucket. See, there it is. Um, okay. The target in this case is going to be the core. Um, so it is bridge write 20. Um, address 20 is where the pocket needs to write its extra uh, parameters. So it's basically another parameter to the um, to whatever command is being executed at that point. And you have the same kind of thing um, when the core responds. If the core is required to pass extra parameters, it puts it 40 uh, in here. And how do we know this? Well, we know this because we have to tell um, the pocket. And we tell it Put it somewhere. So it's, it's, it's some people might think about it the other way. By the way, um, they might look at this as this is what the the core reads from the pocket. But yeah, for me, it makes more sense this way. Um, so there is an address. There is an address somewhere that um, t 
tells it. I think it's zero, four, and eight. So bridge read means the the um, the packet is reading from the core. Packet four, packet eight. I think that's the one. Kind of just refreshing my memory as I'm describing this. So this, there you go. Oh, I can't have that. I'm gonna get the uh, stream taken down again. Should go through the modules. Right, so this is hard coded. Um, And it basically tells um, the pocket that um, it can read stuff um, at 20 and 40. Um, so it does actually, uh, this is basically at pocket four, which used to be. to be host for. And that's what the, um, the pocket can read. So. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to add, because we want to see like a, the beginning of a command um, happening and then kind of trace it out. Um, ideally, what I'd like is to understand and to see a slot. Um, I call them files in my thing, but I don't call them slot. Uh, see a slot getting read, or should I say written, um, which should happen as one of the, um, the, one of the early commands that happens. I'm trying to make sure that I understand um, the chronology um, in, in the way this happens. And I'm thinking that the way this happens is, this, as you see on the packet when you boot, um, basically during boot, the whole file gets written out um, to wherever memory um, the core wants it to be. And to do that, the packet is gonna basically send a command, here's a file, and then start um, going through addresses um, that you told um, that you wanted that file to be. And it's up to you to get those addresses, get the data and put them somewhere else. That's my assumption. Um, I just wanna make sure I understand this um, before I start implementing, well, copying this stuff and then kind of tweaking it to, um, to make more sense for me. We're in the pocket right to We're in pocket right to F8 something. We're also letting right also if it's um yeah, if it's F zero zero something something. Um it's um, writes what is uh, the pocket writes to the pocket registers. And that kind of makes sense. It's basically sending parameters after a command, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is a new command, so we're going to trigger on this next um, when it's getting um, data in 434D, and then the next two bytes uh, are the um, um, command value. So we're going to trigger on this. 
and the next um, tab that we do. But here, it's actually also um, yeah, the, the, the naming in this bugs me because this is basically This is lighting the pocket. I should trigger. I should see if this ever happens, because they would mean that the pocket can write to its own its own parameters. Oh, new follower! Thank you. But the uh, text is in purple, and I can't see the name. <laughs> Ow! I need to fix this. I did make the alert a lot bigger. Um, so um, type in the chat, new follower. I'll be able to see your name better. But thanks for the follow. Maybe I should do a black background for the alerts. Yeah, so what I don't like in this, I like to, ch to make sure I, I understand if that happens at all, is this should only be used as far as I'm, I imagine to pass, say, yeah, to pass um, parameters to, um, to a bridge command. Um, which is what it's doing here. It's basically, well, um, doing here. <laughs> when the bridge is reading, it can read anything from pocket. Apparently on here, it reads things from the core two, but it's when it's at 1000 and so here too. So let's see, I'm sure it'll become clear. It starts at zero. Oh, if it's at safe eight, it's a, uh, Host current target memory, the base address. What happens at 1000? 1000. It's command status from the core to the pocket. Yes. Yes, I agree with that. What I don't understand is why why can you get the bridge right from the core to the pocket? Shouldn't that be a bridge read? Read, sorry. So what on earth can you write? Cause this is like the pocket writing to its own. To its own registers. And the ones that basically to clean up code helps me helps me think maybe another slow night tonight but we're gonna we're gonna figure stuff out
Okay. So, let's take it from the top. Um, these I get. These are basically... The, um, the pocket giving us information. can give us um, the only thing we're filtering out here is the command forget um, forget the command or the status um, we say that we start a command and then here those are the parameters for the command and they get written to the pocket registers it's from the pocket now this I don't get the pocket can write stuff that registers the R from the core. I could trace it or I could comment it out. Same thing here. This is the, uh, the pocket reading. So this is the pocket reading from. I don't know. This is the other way around. So this is. This one's correct. This one looks weird to me. So, um, this one is used to publish the changes to the Linux box. And then I can actually trigger the compilation here, or I can just go here and um, trigger this. Yes. That's interesting. From inside the STP window, it didn't detect the changes, but from inside this, it did. Um, everyone will be happy to know that uh, thanks to the Linux box, the compilation is actually a lot faster too. Although it shouldn't really be that fast. <laughs> That's a little too fast. is the one from um, tutorials and this one the same one that's being modified. Mm 
Always some interesting bits. So it seems like my either I'm not looking on the same on the same files. Reload, for example. Oh yeah, because I'm looking. Yeah. Okay. Now I get it. Because I'm looking at the ones in the core templates. Um, you do the project. So what needs to happen is I do need to copy remotely because this will do this, which is copy the bridge file. Okay, well you get you guys get to see the remote uh, remote build. So as I was saying, the building is a lot faster. Oh, two minutes tops. So my set's gonna be two minutes max. We're at two nineteen already. Trust me, it's faster. I'm not I'm not lying. Okay. Okay. Maybe I'm um, maybe my voice is lower. Maybe it's not, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Okay, so um, this is compiled, which means now that's fine. Just let it go. Question is, um, if I go to single tab, can I program this? And if I do, 
Will this still work? So I can program it. I'm not going to tap. Aha. Uh -huh. So it is, need, it is required. But I don't get it. We should um, trace that. Is what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna add bucket command start. the MacBook pocket command. Pocket command start. Here it is. Let's get the value too while we're at it. Just had just the uh, no, I didn't. Okay, so I'll get rid of this guy. And we're going to trigger on um, on pocket command start. We're not going to trigger on this, not going to trigger on that. Command start. No, don't want that. So just pocket command start. Say this. Legit. Okay. I wish I could start rapid compile, but I cannot because I don't have the uh, pro license for quarters. All right, compile. But if I did, I could. But I cannot. Another follower, which I really need to change that background. I cannot see the name, <laughs> but if you're in the chat, wave hi. 
I can read the chat. I will put a black background on the awards. Or something. Otherwise, it's really hard to read. Oh no, I know I can read. Haha. <laughs> Hold on. Hold my beer while you guys are um, doing this. Oh, instantaneous misc. And the one before was deadly cheesecake. Wow. It's quite the name there. the uh, Twitch activity feed option on OBS so I can actually see what's going on. Okay, so we are compiled. so I can see something. Not this. Open the PGA. Oh, do I need to... Um, nope. This stayed on. Basic assets. Okay, this one works. So now... We should be able to go uh, program. Okay. Compiling for some reason. Rearrange some files while we're waiting. Still don't quite understand. Maybe that makes sense later. But why? Why the pocket feels like it can. Right to both to both the response and the parameters.
Is it because? That's probably why. If I'm sending a command, I'm the pocket, and I'm sending a command. I'm going to send the parameters to the command I'm asking here. And the response from the command from the pocket is going to be on here. And if I'm sending, I'm the core, and I'm saying a command to the, yeah, the, uh, that, that's exactly why. Um, Captain Obvious here. So it's because um, commands go both ways, and you could have um, a command sent from the pocket to the core with a response. Um, or can send from, send from the core to the pocket with a response. So, I'm going to clarify this. As a command from the pocket. We can verify this. One thousand is from the core to the pocket command status. From the core. Yeah, so I'm correct. Yay. Um, commenting while it's compiling, optimizing out um, as host, pocket command start, host command start. Pocket command start is the one I want, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, ready to acquire. Boom. Boom, boom. We missed. We never got a pocket command start. Okay. 
pocket command start is from the pocket. Look where where's the uh, host command start? Oh yeah, of course. Now I know what I did wrong. Um, well, now we still know where this disappeared, so this can go. Bye bye. We did it this trigger and that's why we don't need that trigger so that's never gonna work but since we have to rebuild what's uh okay are you there um what else do we need State's gonna it's the whole state that's gonna get renamed eventually. out. We don't need uh, any triggers on this. Save this. Pocket 20. I think I may already have some stuff. Yeah, there you go. My pocket 20. Oh, well. That should know, right? Got it set to synthesis keep. It's not. Naughty, naughty.
I think to check here is um, I should be able normally to um, to just um, launch this thing, well, reprogram and launch the signal tap right away. Hopefully without having to recompile twice, because if that's the case, then that's ruining my entire um, speed gains for the um, with the Linux box. Yeah, but that should compile the core. It's not. Hmm. No. No. Somehow I don't think that it really had changes that I didn't save. Oh yeah, but it doesn't reboot my uh, my pocket. That's why. Oh, this time. Okay, to read it, but yet that didn't work. Hmm. Very weird. Have to figure that out. I don't think that's right. Oh, I think I remember what it is. I think unless you close the single tap window, it doesn't actually save. Quartus doesn't actually save anything. Um, so I'm compiling the old single tap. But when it does it itself, then it saves. Of course, because, you know, it knows what to do. Let's try that next time. Okay, you're there. Nearly there. So. Program. Now we're ready. 
Boom. 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 Oh, already. Cool. So, this is the first, very first command that I'm catching um, during the uh, asset boot. And it basically happens after a write with um, an address um, F8. Zero 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 blah blah blah. Um, the right data is four three four D, which is uh, the name of the command, and then the I guess it's the first argument. There you go. Command word. So command word is zero. And it's basically asking for a status. Post command lists. It's the request status. guys up here. Okay. All right. I'm going to take a quick bathroom break and I will be right back.
and we are back. Uh, okay, so um, you see the pointer? Yes. So in here, um, we get a write. Uh, the write data is 434D, which is a status request from the the pocket. Just trying to make sure, of, like, you know, find out, figure out what we're doing. The result code is going to be, so you can see some, some, um, I call it host state, but, well, that's the state of treating a host, host command. Uh, we're idle, 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 and we're parsing the command, and we're done. Because this doesn't request, re require a lot, all it's busy saying is uh, posting this to the uh, result code. Where does this get written? So these get um, um, these get these get processed here. So we're wide open, we're not doing anything. If we have a command start, uh, we take it down. And then we're not idle. We're parsing. Next cycle, we're parsing. Um, We're saying that we are busy. Forty two fifty five. So that's the uh, status. So, 55 busy, st busy status. Not quite sure what the 55 is in this case, but... Then, um, zero, 00, it's a request status. Result code. And pocket command is. Oh, we didn't. Yeah, we did. Start val. Can we add pocket command to this? for next time. Um, oh. I 
should I verify? Well, I guess we'll verify next time when we uh, we change some code. Uh, let's do that in the background. But we keep looking at the code. Then Pocket command is zero. I love this module. Keeping it louder while we're uh, tracing. So it should be this guy. Okay, so it's basically giving different statuses. I don't think the result goes any of these. I guess we'll find out where the um, command is. Hey, look, we're at a. We can program. Require. Launch. Okay, so now we have. command which is zero kind of not very surprising here um why is it writing oh it's writing not three h I'm thinking it's writing three um h as in h was an hexadecimal number no it's writing three and it's writing three because we're idle so because that's true the core is not running yet we're we we made it stop during the boot process before it loads any of the data. So we're idle. So we're telling you we're idle. And then we go, done. Done. So if I remember correctly, you can't really see any of the other commands after that. The pocket stays, waits forever to do anything, see? Um, but some of the addresses are changing, and we get at some point. Let's read this stuff. There we go. Do it's going to do a read of our result. 
So it's saying. Pack original code is three. It hasn't been read yet. So turn this down now. Manual's not quite as nice. I should I'm gonna skip it. Well, I need to be in here to skip it. Skip. Um let's zoom out a little bit. So between here and here, so almost 700 some cycles. Um, yeah, close to a good 700 cycles. The pocket doesn't actually read the, the result. It reads the result here. So basically it sends its command. I want to have a new status. Let's read the status. So it does that by going on the bridge. Zoom in now. Going on the bridge. Um, I'm going, I want to read I'm going to write 40 in here, that's an old day, like this boy stale stuff that's still here. No, that probably doesn't matter. So right about here. Um, it says read. I want to read um, FA00, which is status. And where do we get back? We put back, and that's where I need to put some more stuff on the trace, um, because this actually gets written out to memory. Um, we write back. Um, 4F, 4B, 003. What does that mean? 4F, 4B, okay, result code. So that's the, the result of the command that the, so that the pocket um, asked us to do. That's an entire cycle. Um, we have the command, we have the busy, and we have the okay. So now we need to figure out um, why it's not letting me trace Bucket result could go here. Slots. Well, we'll do those next because those are the ones I'm really interested in. There you go. Done means pocket zero gets 4F4B. 4F4B. And then the uh, return code. And we we'll go back to idle. So we should really try and see pocket zero. Sure, the, um, the command status. Okay, what else is this doing? So it's using pocket zero. Pocket 20 might be optimized out because it's not used anywhere. Parameter data. Yeah, it is kind of used somewhere, but maybe this is hard coded. 
and it's simplified out. Hmm. I mean, my synthesis keep argument does work. Um, Let's, let's see what it's doing. So we have data slot read, data slot all complete. We'll add those now because those are the next ones that we're gonna wanna look at. Some safe states. Sometimes it doesn't have enough room to uh, to single signal tab everything. Bunch of data slot. Thanks for nothing. I'm gonna make this much wider. And hopefully this will make it a little bit more convenient. Separate uh, wires instead of showing it as a register for right now.
Ah, beleza. Okay, that's a lot of stuff. In order. Save that in case it crashes on me. Um, Okay, while well, this is compiling, I will be right back.
Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Huh. Microphone not in front of my face. Doesn't work. Okay. So. We have compiled um, the program. Uh, we acquire and then reboot. A lot more stuff. But we can see now is um, so pocket zero does definitely seem to be compiled out. Um, pocket 20, sorry. But pocket zero um, has this nice response. So if we go back to where we're triggering, here, yeah, so we're still triggering on our request. It's a little easier to see. Um, where, um, there you go, where the uh, data gets written out. So the last, um, this is 434D00, which means Command. So that's basically when it gets um, written out from the um, from the right data. So that happens here. And because it's four three four D, it uses the lower sixteen bits to um, set command. Right, so start bucket command. Okay, so that's just a buffer basically of like the command start. But that's fine. And then when it's done, uh, where is our status? At the same time, it's got um, after parse. It's hard to see, but we'll try and scroll slowly. Um, when we're done, this is where we post the response. And again, the response only gets read. I don't know if we still have it on this. I forget the values. Oh, well, let's look at the read and write. There you go. There's read and write. There you go. The response gets read here. Request, command start, check. Now, what I noticed the other day, because um, now we're kind of back to where I was, <laughs> two hour stream to get back to where you were last time you streamed. That's um, that's my style, that's how I roll. Um, it does ask for the value twice. Now, nothing's happening in between and I've seen that on other commands, um, so why not, you know? I basically just ask for it again, um, but we haven't changed anything, so we just keep on putting it in the, the right bus. Not sure what that's all about, but hey, why not? So we don't see another, well, we do see another read here. This read is, um, We'll rename those two, like pocket read and pocket write. Um, this reads at um, four zero, and it wants to. So are we honoring this? What are we doing? Yeah, pocket read is zero. So. We're putting zero. And this does not, um, is that considered a command? It's 
not a command because it's basically just accessing data. It's reading forty. It's probably reading forty because we told it to. Yeah, pretty sure we told it to. We told it to here. There we go. Post command response data. Where the core will write an extra response to. Now, did you write anything at 40? Oh. I don't remember what that is. So this is interesting. Um, again, add that to a list of things I do not understand. Um, so when you when you're done with the command, we give it um, there you go. Turn OK result goes zero. But this is not the, the this is the result code of the command. This is not the result of the command. Maybe that's that's why this makes a little bit more sense. So we say request status. code so we give it three and then it tries to give us grab us grab our uh, packet 40 but it really did not give us anything else did it? So we do give it 40, which is zero. It's asking for it. Now the question is, did anything happen? Oh, nothing. Because this is still the um, the read from the status. So basically this is, give me a status. Give me the results. Boom, 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 boom. Repost it. And nothing happens until this, which is give me 40. What's interesting is it must have, it must be because of other commands that happened before that. Puzzling, because you would think it would give, it would read the results from the previous command, but it seems like it's reading the results from some old command that it had done before, but I haven't seen it. And what we could do is go... This is a safe state, so it does that. <laughs> it's 
full on just relying on something that happened before. That did happen, I didn't see it. sure that I am still waiting on everything. I am. So the core isn't booted yet. It's somehow it's still um Asking it stuff. Um, it's definitely the result from. Is it definitely the result? Interesting to see what happens after, but Oops. okay. This is what we're saying here. Yeah. Let's be stream set up cars in breeding state. Bucket with and bucket spin locks to core reports set up state. Well, we're, what we are reporting is where we're idle. So we're not even in set up state. We don't see that. If we look at this, setup done, like setup's already done. Lloyd Bonif, thank you for the follow. Now that I can read names, even better. So it's in booting state first. So the boot is done, obviously. Setup is done, the boot is done, the core is running. And I'm guessing it must assume the last command it asked for 
where um, the only thing I'm the only thing I'm providing as a result, or we're providing as a result here, is um, safe tip supported. Are we saying no? That's an input. But we're not going to do anything. Because why, you know? There's this dangling wire right here. Safe step supported. figure out if we understand what's going on. So first things first. Save this. good measure and then actually can I do it the way they do it I just want to see if I see this, um, if this um, pocket 40 value is the safe state, because I don't see anything else in my code that's um, setting it, or in analogs code. So I'm going to force it to one. Um, don't care if we support safe states or not in this demo, but I just want to see if we see a different value in there. to understand um, it's just weird that it's reading this um, address 40 um, right after a command that doesn't write anything there there's an assumption there that's um, a lot 
But since it's the pocket requesting this, maybe it knows that nothing else should have overridden the previous value and just, you know, assumes. Should be able with this. To uh, reprogram the bucket and signal type directly because I think this has forced Cortis to save its stuff. Program. Was rebooting you? Acquire. Okay. Oh, pocket forty is still zero. Still reading at one point. Yep. We're still putting zero. Which makes sense because that's where it is here, but I'm like. What I don't understand is. How does this how does it assume what's on there? Bridge read, yes, F eight zero 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 four zero. Triple check everything, which would get us here. And it does give you pocket forty. And the only thing that says pocket forty is here. Okay. sure I don't think anything is calling this so if nothing's calling this that's not what I want I want that And nothing like I even said it. Why? Hey, healing him. See, thank you for the follow.
There's nothing here that sets pocket 40. Yes. All right. One more compile. I uh, will be right back. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Last few minutes and I'll wrap it up. Um, 
never feel like I get anything done in these, but sometimes that's how it goes. I'm having fun. Isn't that the most important? Um, okay. Program. Syntax. Oh, oops. Publish it. Don't worry about it. I mean, most people would basically ignore this and just move forward and go to the slot loading part. Um, it bugs me. It bugs me that I don't understand why it's accessing um, a, um, a value at 40 assuming that there's something meaningful there but I didn't put anything there yeah so where the core writes extra results from its command you didn't send me any commands that modified this because the only commands that you can send me is um these guys save state start query load query we haven't done that and so you're you're asking me something I guess there's nothing that says um, there's nothing that says I should write Give it 40, so it's the beginning of the response data pointer. But Zero response. There's zero response, yet you're testing a response right after that. <laughs> Again, most people would not care. And probably uh, get up to speed way quicker than I do all the time in the world.
Oké. Okay. And the other things I don't the other thing I don't like is this is not being set to anything. Um initially. So what's interesting um is this the bridge stuff. Um is what is setting um, the reset pin. So every other module that tests um, reset n, um, it's being set by, by this. And so this cannot use reset n to set its value, so it's using an initial block, which I'm still told by some people is something that should only work in simulation. And I've actually seen a bug in one of my old demos where the initial code was not being um, executed correctly. But, um, there it is. So this is the reset impulsion. And it's reset go low. It was reset. Go high. We good? That was good. this wow that was on purpose in the module okay tools signal tap Let's do this. Program. Acquire. Acquire. Oh, what is it? Is something? I said to uh, twenty four. So it's basically reading the initial value. Nothing else touches this. Though <laughs> UTF. Um, yeah. So it is what it is. It has. It's uh, asking me for a response. It's checking a response without uh, having given me any commands that require a response. And worse. This is actually re receiving whatever is left over in there on initialization. Nothing even it's clearing it to zero. But if so, why is this clearing things to zero then? You know, you can all assume that things will be zero and things are okay. Oh dear. Okay. Well. I'm going to go put this down to um, weird behavior. Or at least behavior I don't understand. Let's put it this way. Behavior that I do not understand. Um, if um, we can definitely fix that. If anybody watches, watches this on YouTube, uh, on Twitch later on and knows why um, after doing a status request the pocket then accesses the results 
of that command. Even though well, the, res uh, the, the response the response of the command here read read 40 so maybe I'm reading this wrong but to me this is trying to get the response of the command 000 even though there is no response or worse <laughs> should be even worse it's trying to get the response of another command previously assuming that that's still there which is clearly not the case in this code so ooh -hoo. Anyway, um, next time we will track down, uh, we'll continue tracing um, and trying to get to the file slot loading um, part. Um, we are we don't see the thing where it's in setup. Very That probably happens. Because by the time I'm here, setup is done. We just done setup is done. Um, all right, I'll do one last test just to see. Can I program? I can't quite right there. No, it's launched already. So I don't think I can see the setup phase. Yeah, next time I'm trying to track this down, see if we can actually see this happening. Um, it doesn't say. It doesn't say that this happened during idle. Slow request write. Call me choose. this one down to okay well that'll be for next time until then take care guys see you later <laughs>